something that's important to remember when thinking about urban history is that urbanization was a process. That cities weren't just transplanted into particular geographic spaces overnight and that over time the lines that we think of today between agricultural space and urban space or wilderness space and urban space were lines that were drawn over time both conceptually and materially. And as a result of that, when we look in the past, we can actually see that transition from environments that were, uh, in some cases, wild environments, in some cases were agricultural environments that uh, transformed over time into urban environments. Um, if we take the Toronto area, for example, uh, there are elements of agricultural practices that we can observe in the city of Toronto over the course of the entirety of its 19th century history, but also well into its 20th century history. So I've looked at animal husbandry in Toronto uh, over the course of the 19th century and into the beginning of the 20th century, and we find that people continue to raise animals in urban environments into the 1910s, the 1920s, the 1930s. The difference is their practices of raising animals change. As space became more constrained, as it became less practical to raise large numbers of animals, the practices of livestock husbandry in cities transformed, such that by the beginning of the 20th century, only a small number of people kept animals in the city, and they changed the types of species that they kept. So for example, more people kept horses and cattle earlier in the 19th century than in later in the 19th century. We could see their populations decline over time. But as those large animals declined, small domestic animals like chickens increase in their population in Toronto into the early 20th century. Now why is that? We can imagine perhaps for pragmatic purposes, it's difficult to keep large animals, but easy to keep small animals. Uh, chickens are also quite useful animals uh, for subsistence for uh, the urban poor. Uh, so you can keep chickens for, for their eggs, and you can keep them in a small space, and you could feed them very cheaply, uh, whereas a pig, or a cow is quite expensive uh, to keep. And as a city like Toronto grew, and grew in terms of its human population, it explodes at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, it becomes almost impossible to keep a cow in the city because the easiest way to feed it is to allow it to roam freely and find its own food. But that becomes quite impractical when there are over 100,000 humans living in that environment by the end of the 19th century.